the number seven World Trade Center. I've heard several reports from several different officers now that that is the building that is going to go down next. In fact, one officer told me they're just waiting for that to come down at this point. Keep your eye on that building. It's coming down. The building is about to blow up. Move it back. All right, guys. And it would sound like a countdown. And at the last few seconds, he took his hand off, and you heard three, two, one. And he was just saying, just run for your life. Just run for your life. And then it was like another two, three seconds. You heard explosions. Like, ba-boom. It's like a distinct sound. This was ba boom, and like you felt a rumble in the ground, like almost like you wanted to grab onto something. According to Larry Silverstein, on the morning of September 11, 2001, he attended an appointment with a dermatologist. Where were you on September 11? Um, you know, uh, I was home. Um, and I, the only reason I wasn't where I was every morning, uh, subsequent to the 26th day of July, um, I was, my, my mornings were spent um, usually at a breakfast meeting at Windows, an 8 o'clock breakfast meeting, Windows, the top of it, right? and then going down to visit with my tenants, my new tenants at the trade center, getting to know them, understanding their problems and so forth, ascertaining how, I could, how we could service their needs better. Um, and uh, which is a first, first, one of the first things you do when you acquire a property. You begin to meet your, pe meet your tenants and start talking with them. Um, and so my mornings were spent at the trade center. And then by noon I was back uptown. And, uh, uh, and so that particular morning, uh, because I have I call it hair and fair skin, and uh, I'm a newity to the dermatologist. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife, God bless her, had made an appointment for me uh, at the doctor. And I remember dressing to go to the doctor. I'm finally saying to my wife, I said, sweetheart, I've got so much to do downtown. I've got to cancel this. I've got to go downtown. And she said, you're not going to cancel this appointment. You're going to the dermatologist. And you know, having been married now for the, to the same woman for 46 years, you, you get the sense of determination on occasion, their voices. And I said, okay, okay, yes, dear, I'll go. I'll go. And then just minutes later, I uh, received a telephone call to turn on a television set and witnessed this horrendous circumstance. Uh, the first plane hitting, and then the second plane hitting, of course, with the second hit. Uh, it became obvious that this was terrorism. I remember getting a call from the uh, fire department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. And I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull, and then we watched the building collapse. Three years later, Silverstein issued a statement claiming that he had used the term pull it to refer to pulling the firefighters out of Building 7. But there are several problems with Silverstein's explanation. According to FEMA's building performance study, firefighters were never in the building, preliminary indications were that due to lack of water, no manual firefighting actions were taken by the fire department. And these statements, from Popular Mechanics and the New York Times, confirmed that no firefighting took place in Building 7, and that the fire department had ordered firefighters away from the building at 11.30 am. Another problem is that Silverstein made no reference to the firefighters when he talked about Building 7 for the PBS documentary. Plus, after Silverstein stated that the decision was made to pull Building 7, he finished his sentence with these words. And then we watched the building collapse. This would indicate that the collapse of Building 7 was the direct result of the decision to pull it. As a successful property developer, 
Silverstein would have gained considerable experience in hiring contractors to carry out controlled demolition of buildings. It's reasonable to assume that he would be aware that the term pull, is often used by demolition experts to refer to bringing a building down. For example, here's Ground Zero's post-disaster wrecking crew, talking about preparing to demolish, Building 6. Hello? Oh, we're getting ready to pull Building 6. When referring to Building 7, it was Silverstein who suggested that the smartest thing to do was to pull it. I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. And because Silverstein has more knowledge of controlled demolition than he does of firefighting, it is reasonable to assume that he was referring to pulling the building down. In an article titled Shame on Jesse Ventura, Fox News journalist Jeffrey Shapiro confirms that Larry Silverstein had controlled demolition on his mind on September the 11th. And it was no secret to police and others on the ground that day. Shapiro stated that on September the 11th, Larry Silverstein was on the phone to his insurance carrier to see if they would authorize the controlled demolition of Building 7. This revelation causes yet another problem for the official story. How could Silverstein expect to carry out a controlled demolition when it takes several weeks to prepare a 47-story building for demolition? Now, here we're going to show you a videotape of the collapse itself. Describe that. Now we go to videotape the collapse of this building. It's amazing. A amazing, incredible, pick your word. For the third time today, it's reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed, destroyed by well-placed dynamite to knock it down. To me, I knew that was an explosion. There was no doubt in my mind. September the 11th was clearly a most fortunate day for Larry Silverstein. Not only did he avoid being killed by the attacks, he received a multi-billion dollar settlement from an insurance policy taken out just a few weeks before. This policy was set up specifically to ensure the buildings against destruction via a terrorist attack. This was particularly fortunate, considering the fact that Silverstein was having difficulty in finding new tenants to occupy the buildings at the Trade Center. And it was also particularly fortunate, considering that Silverstein had faced the $1 billion requirement of having to remove the illegal asbestos from every steel beam in the Twin Towers. So, if Larry Silverstein's story is true, then he must surely be the luckiest man alive today. Larry Silverstein, last time we talked, sir, I asked you if you could address some of the 9-11 conspiracy theories that you are accused of. Uh, sadly, your response has actually invited more of them. I mean, for the record, everybody knows your infamous comments on PBS where you said pull Building 7 uh, on 525 on the day of 9-11. Your official response was that it was the firefighters. My question is, it was pretty clear that you meant the building, and if it was the firefighters, they already are outside the building by 12 because the water lines were broken. Ask the question. And the, the fire chief that you said you spoke to, Fire Chief Nagro, denies talking to you on that day of 9-11. Can you answer those questions and address the theories against you? I suggest to everybody's consideration Just one question. that we all look at the thousands of pages of testimony that have been rendered in the 
many years since 9 11. And let's use today's session for some of this. Are you aware of testimony of bombs in the building before the building collapsed, sir? Are you aware of that testimony? Sir, there's testimony by Barry Jennings. You sir, you don't have to touch me. Uh, listen, I'll, I'll walk away. All I'm asking is a question. I don't have to, don't have to be kicked out. It's a legitimate question. You don't have to put your hands on me. But all I'm saying is, no, I'm not. I'm here asking. The question was not answered. That's why I have a grievance. Larry Silverstein was told not to come into work. That's why him, his daughter, and his son never showed up to work on not 11. He, he put an insurance policy on the buildings. Reporters, do your job, please. Ask some questions. Ask